start here. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening in Central Africa. We have a fantastic program here today. This is our, I think, third episode of Africa, and I think we have one more left next week. But today we're visiting Zambia, Botswana, and Namibia. So thank you for joining us today. Um, as you might know, we have 29 properties in overall in Africa and Indian Ocean. Um, and a lot of these properties are properties that you book through your tour operators and your DNCs. Um, so it's really cool that you're joining us here today to just know that we actually, you know, we have some really in Chacho properties out there that are really fantastic. So this is our route today that we're gonna take. Um, we're gonna start over here um, with Tina at Royal Chindu in Zambia. And we'll pop over here to Botswana and visit Duba Plains and Zarafa Camp with Great Plains. And then we'll end in Nab Namibia with Epako, which is one of our newest members. Um, and also over here, Mpala Jenna Camp is opening next year. It's got only five tents and one villa, but um, it's also part of Great Plains in Zimbabwe, um, right by Victoria Falls. But that is opening next year, so we'll tell you more about that next time. <laughs> Excuse me. As you know, Relaine Chateau, we are almost 600 members, and what makes our property so special is that they are all independently owned and operated, and we have some maitre de maison here today. We have Tina, who owns um, Royal Chindu, and so it's really cool for me to be presenting to you our African properties, because I feel that the African properties have a true spirit of Relain Chateau, where you can really get the sense of place and um, taste the food of the land and really get to see the history and how the properties are so committed to preserving that local heritage. So, we'll, so it'll be exciting for you to hear um, all the cool stuff that our properties are doing in these areas. These are the channels of booking. WB is our chain code, 800 line rings into New York. And of course, as you know, we have our online um, all of our online um, portals we have on our phones, the apps and the websites and the travel agent portal that you can log into and access all of your preferred partner and virtuoso rates. Our route du bonheur, our sample itineraries, and we do have one in this region. If you go on our website, you can see, you can string together a few properties to make a road to happiness. Um, and that's me on the west coast, Tiago's on the east coast, our central res is in New York. And here are the contacts to all the people presenting today and I will be sending this to you afterwards as a follow-up so you can connect directly with our hotel members. So without further ado, we are going to start in um, along by uh, the Victoria Falls. Tina, are you there? Can you unmute yourself? <laughs> You must please excuse me because my my signal keeps going in and out. Um, are you happy that I just start sharing my screen? Yes, please. I'm, and I'm gonna I'm gonna channel my my Tina. Channel your <laughs> channel your inner Chatenge. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you're so little. You can wear it as a bandeau top, but um, I'm a little bit bigger, so I need six meters. Yeah. Uh, okay, <laughs> little. So, you, I, I love how you. Um, as, you doubted that I would make it onto, but actually you were quite right because I'm a slightly stupid, well, actually very stupid. Um, no, Tina. Tina is absolutely incredible. And if you have not met her, I'm sure a lot of you have met her already. She is an incredibly passionate woman and runs an incredible lodge that I can't wait to see. Are you, are you okay sharing your screen? I'm trying, no, my, please, my, I, I sincerely, sincerely apologize. My stupid, um, oh, okay, Tina, my let's silly, see silly, silly, send me yeah. the presentation and we'll put you last. Let's, should we do that? Okay. I'll just send you, can I, Alex, can I send you the link? Send me the link. Okay. I'll send you the link right now. Okay. So, so go to somebody else. I'll go last. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Sorry we'll go, we'll pop back to Victoria Falls a little bit later and we'll start um, at Zarafa Camp and Duba Plains with Alex Walters. Alex? 
You're muted, Alex. <laughs> we can <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. There we can, go. can we start with Namibia while I get Tina's link up? And then we'll go to me and then Tina at the end. Is okay, possible? perfect. Yeah, sorry. I love it. I'm excited. It's fun. The suspense. Must I do something now? Nope, we're <laughs> going to start with Alex in Zarafa camp. Are we starting with me? I thought we were yeah. going to start with um, Namibia. Oh, you no? want to start all the way? Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's start with Namibia. Is that all right, guys? So Welcome to Africa, to we presentation up. <laughs> All right, Paolo and Constantine, let's talk about Namibia. Are you, a, are you ready, Paolo and Constantine? Yes, we are. Okay, we'll start from the, from the west coast in Namibia. So we're going to share our screen? Okay. Epaco is one of our newest lodges, actually. Um, they joined us about a year ago. All right. Um, first of all, thank you and uh, good morning to everyone. Um, my name is Constantine and next to me there is Paolo, which is our uh, general manager. Uh, we are both Namibian residents. Now, uh, EPACO is actually the only real estate property in Namibia. We are located in the uh, central northern part of Namibia, let's say. Epaco in the local Herero uh, language, the tribe, the local tribe is the Hereros. It means at the edge of the mountain ridge. And in that sense, Epaco is quite unique because it's one of the very few properties in Namibia that has incorporated mountains within uh, our private property. For that reason, as you may see, um, it is quite green for, uh, for Namibian standards. Obviously, Namibia is a very arid and uh, dry climate country. Uh, where we are located, once again, we are in more or less in the center, center northern. We are in the middle of that uh, virtual triangle between Windhoek, which is the capital of our country and is where all international flights will uh, land. Uh, the uh, coastal city of Swakopmund is one of the main attractions in Namibia, uh, obviously uh, on the western part of the country, and um, the Etosa National Park, which as you might imagine is the Kruger Park of Namibia. Um, we are by car about two hours and a half from Vintuk. Uh, two hours and 15 minutes from Swakopmund and about three hours and 15 minutes from the uh, National Park, from the Southern Gates. By light aircraft, since we do uh, have our own private airstrip, which is uh, certified by the Namibian Authority, Namibian Aviation Authority, we are about 30 to 45 minutes from the international airport, the same about 40 minutes from the coastal city of Soakopmund and about 50 to 60 minutes maximum from the national park. Um, <clears throat> our lodge, uh, which is practically new, uh, we were reconstructed, renovated in 2014, we opened at the end of 2014, early 2015, um, is a very, uh, uh, we have a very zen, luxurious, in a discreet way, ambience. Everything was done by a very well known interior designer in the Western Cape and Namibia. Her name is Heidrun Dickman. And it's the, as you may see, is a very minimalist African style, very far from the old colonial. Um, Baroque style, which can be very uh, obtrusive, we think, and we like to put a nature in, um, in focus. When it comes to gastronomy, obviously, we are very, very focused on gastronomy, being a RLS at all property. Our uh, kitchen uh, brigade and executive chef is from uh, Mauritius, for obvious reasons. Uh, we believe in local produce, uh, so we have we would call it a very sophisticated cuisine, but with Namibian produce, everything from our local market, everything is homemade from uh, bread all the way to dessert. 
And having an executive chef means that we are able to cater to all dietary requirements. Uh, we just need to know in advance or at least upon arrival. We accept all diets, religious, uh, clinical, um, or um, purely fashion diets. Um, and we will, as I said before, we will cater to everything at no extra cost for the guest. We do not enforce or believe in communal dining, but uh, so all of your guests, whether they're two, three, four, or uh, that we get their own table. Should they wish to mingle with other guests or if we have a special venue, then obviously the uh, tables are there and the infrastructure is there. All of the meals are served in front of our main water hole. We have about eight water holes. The main water hole is just 80 meters or about, um, uh, let's say, uh, 230, 250 feet from, uh, from the terrace. So the view is really, really unobstructed and is like watching a wildlife documentary. As you can see on, on the picture, the, you have rhinos coming to the water hole, you have uh, zebra and, and antelopes, and it's really, really an amazing and unobstructed view, which is also um, uh, able to, I mean, which is also visible at night as the water hole is uh, um, illuminated uh, during the evening. We offer different venues for our guests, especially if they, uh, uh, if they uh, stay with us for more than two nights, that we have uh, meals on different venues, either on the main terrace or on our barbecue um, area. We call it Bry in South Africa, Southern Africa, um, in order for them to have a more exciting uh, dinner or just to change the venue. Uh, once again, you can see that the, the, the water is, is extremely near for for uh, safari of standards, because we are higher, we are slightly higher, therefore uh, there is no safety concerns. When it comes to accommodations, we have 10 accommodation units of which six are uh, deluxe double rooms and four are suites. Our double rooms are range, they're very spacious, they range anywhere from 650 to 850 square feet. 60 to 80 square meters. And then our suites range from 100, uh, let's say 1,000 uh, to uh, 3,300 square feet. Uh, we believe in open spaces. Uh, Africa is about open spaces, obviously. And um, it's obvious that being a five-star safari lot, you will have, your guests will have all five-star comfort from autonomous air conditioning, obviously to satellite uh, TV, and um, um, mini bars, coffee and tea stations, and uh, uh, laptop size safes, um, freestanding bathtubs, and so on. Another view of one of our uh, accommodation units. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to animals, because time is passing, uh, we have a very big population of animals. We are very exclusive. We all, our animals are very calm. We do not allow or accept day visits or bus loads of guests. Uh, we, have a we have more than 200 giraffes in the wild. One of them is a resident giraffe. Her mo his mother was very well known all over the globe, Oscar, and he her son is Oscar as well. Your guests will be able to interact with Oscar and obviously it's an amazing experience to be able to pet a six meter uh, giraffe. Apart from this, we are one of the very few properties, private properties in Namibia to have both species of rhinos. We are, have white and black rhinos. We are very proud to be also part of the conservation program of that amazing animal, um, which is run and uh, which is monitored by the Ministry of Environment in Namibia. Uh, uh, we have, we also, participating in the conservation program of the pangolin, which is another species under extinction, actually is the most post species in the world at the moment. Um, and obviously we have uh, all types of antiopes from the smallest, the Gamara dick dick, endemic to Namibia, to the largest, the eland. Um, as I said, more than 200 giraffes in the wild. Um, 
Our white rhinos can be approached on walking safaris. You know, white rhinos are very different from blacks. Uh, they're very, uh, they're much more uh, predictable. Uh, we believe in walking safaris and you know that most guests now uh, tend to uh, prefer to get off the vehicle because they've been on the vehicle throughout their tour. When it comes to big cats, we have leopards and cheetah. Uh, we also have a cheetah rehabilitation boma where the, your guests will be able to experience the feeding of the cheetah. Um, sorry about that. Obviously, we offer the, 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 the traditional game viewing um, activities, sunrise uh, game drive, afternoon game drive, and amazing sundowners on top of our mountains. Uh, you can see that um, the, the, the view is magnificent. And the, I would say it's not as monotonous as when you have a flat uh, property. And on top of all that, we have a brand new uh, spa, which is um, uh, it's a, in a purposely built building. It's an elongated building. It has a uh, 100, uh, 100 feet uh, glass facade. Um, the use of the spa is obviously included in the price, it's only the treatments that are paid extra. So your guests will be able to use the, uh, the, the, the hot tub, the sauna, the steam room, um, and no extra charge. Only treatments, as I said, will be built extra. And I'm sure there is no guest will, that will say that it's not a unique experience to be in a hot tub and look at white rhinos. Uh, 30 meters from, from, from the spa. And on top of all, of all that, we also have a, a full on equipped by Techno Gym uh, fitness room, which is also included obviously in the price and gives uh, to the guest that doesn't have to be all day, every day on a vehicle, something else to do. Uh, we are very proud of our spa therapists. They are very well uh, trained. And we are the only Regesato in Namibia and we expect you or your guests um, so that we can show them what APACO is about. Thank you so much. Uh, now our general manager, um, Paolo, can answer your questions. Thank you, Constantine and Paolo. Um, it's so funny that you have this um, gym because a lot of Americans really, even though there's so much, you know, outdoor activities that one can do. Americans do like to have a gym, so that's really great. Um, I totally we have a agree with you, Emma. And uh, they see an NPA in the gym all day. <laughs> <laughs> they like to work out and be fit. Um, I have a couple questions, Paolo. What is the typical length of stay in Epaco? Usually, uh, it's around three nights, I would say. Um, most of the guests decide to stay around that um, the three nights uh, because that gives the right amount of time to do all the activities also to, as you, you know, well said, uh, enjoy their time with all the facilities, the spa and the gym and okay. all the activities that we have to offer. And what is the largest, of the 10 accommodations that you do have, what is the largest suite? So we do have uh, different rooms. Uh, the water hall suite will be one of the largest suites that we have, um, 3,000 square uh, feet, uh, followed by the river suite. Uh, now the water hall suite uh, can also accommodate families um, if connected to other rooms. Up to six people can uh, have a, a private villa, uh, say, um, including the water hall suite. Okay, great. And does it Epaco accommodate kosher or vegan clients? Yes, we do. All sorts of dietary requirements, uh, eat lifestyle. <laughs> Great. And what is the best time of the year to visit Epaco? Um, Look, uh, Namibia is one of those uh, destinations is good, uh, you know, 12 months a year, really. Um, uh, the, with the exception probably of the month of uh, November, I would say that it's a bit uh, warmer than the other months. Uh, but for the rest, the, the weather is really mild. Uh, the winters are really, really, what we call, the, uh, you know, almost Mediterranean <laughs> climate. Um, so I would say that it's, it's, it's a good, good destination throughout uh, the year. Is there a minimum age stay for children or is it... Uh, 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 Papa is one of the few lodges, I guess, in Namibia uh, that um, welcomes also children. 
Uh, we don't have uh, any restriction in terms of age and yeah, so on. Or BC cancer. Also, infants are, mm -hmm. uh, you know, <laughs> often in uh, the launch. Great. Okay. I think that's it. That's wonderful. Thank you. So an option you in Namibia. Thank you, Paula and Constantine. Thank you very much, Amy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. So let's pop over to, I think we've got things sorted. Let's pop. You might see a lot of Jill Wagner on your screen there <laughs> from Great Plains as our panel. <laughs> so I apologize for that. Um, but Alex is here from Great Plains. And he's going to share with us Zarafa Camp and Duba Plains. <laughs> and Royal Chindi. <laughs> and Royal Chindi. <laughs> right. um, <laughs> it's all family. We're all family here. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, Great Plains Conservation have camps and lodges in, uh, well, um, three countries, Kenya, Botswana, and Zimbabwe. I'm just getting my remote control up. Um, and sorry, just bear with me, technical glitch. Um, there we go. Just go. Okay, um, so we have five Relo Chateau member properties in Kenya, Zimbabwe, and Botswana. I'm gonna talk about those two boxed up on the left there. Part of our reserve uh, range of properties are premium camps. We also have explorer style products, which are more like authentic bush camps with style. Um, but we're going to Botswana, to Zarafa and Duba Plains. Um, so we had this presentation run in order. We would have started at Royal Chindu over here. In order to get to do your, your route de bonheur, you would have done a 45 minute drive roughly to Kasani and then do a about 60 minute flight to the Cylinder Airstrip in the Cylinder Reserve of Northern Botswana. Um, the Slender Reserve is 320,000 hectares, no acres, so it's about 140,000 hectares. Um, it's a very, very important reserve. The reason why you would go to Slender is it has the highest concentration of elephants anywhere in Africa. It's a wild dog hotspot, it's a lion and predator hotspot, leopard hotspot, and it also has the highest population of uh, buffalo in Botswana. The other major geographical feature there that you see is the Okavango Delta, and we'll come on to that a second uh, to Duba Plains concession over here afterwards. Um, we have three camps. Zaraf is on the east of the uh, Slender Reserve. Running through the middle of it, you've got the Slender Spillway, which is an offshoot from the Okavango, moving eastwards towards the Linyanti Kwando River system, which in turn moves eastwards to the Chobe River system, which then connects to Zambezi. Chindu, Victoria Falls. That's why it's a fantastic route de bonheur. Um, so to Zarafa. Um, so this, all of our camps, our, our tented camps, uh, are what I would describe as colonial style. They're, they're designed to look better with age. Um, so you know, these are sort of part of our reserve collection of, of properties and like reserve wines, they get better with age, but these have already been aged and they're fantastic right now to, to drink. Um, we did win about six years ago now, the Relo Chateau Environment Trophy, which meant at that time, in all of the 500 plus Relo Chateau properties in the world, we were the most environmentally friendly and ecological. Um, and even in those six years since, we have upgraded the technology as technology has improved. So some of the features that we have, we are 100% solar powered, all of these, uh, the flooring that you see here are old railway sleepers um, that are reclaimed woods. We have linen from Botswana um, and other ecological features like um, bottle uh, crushing. We crush our glass bottles and make bricks out of them, for example. Or our food waste goes into a hole in the ground and from that we bottle gas, which heats the, the tents. You can see just there that we've got like a little uh, heater for the room. Um, so, and also we do the cooking off that gas as well. So some of those environmental features that we include. Um, all of the furniture here at Zarapa was made from reclaimed timbers from the Boxing Day tsunami that hit Indonesia 15 years ago. So all of these little reclaimed woods um, go into making this camp a very ecological camp. 
Um, we have private elephants. Um, we have nice baths outside, as well as um, showers and baths inside, and a bath uh, as well as a, a bath inside. If you're very adventurous, you can have a bath outside there and um, beyond that elephant. We do take social distancing very carefully. So we've got the two meter rule here with the elephant wait, uh, waiting on the table. Um, so uh, you can feel rest assured that COVID is the least of your worries. There's other stuff that's gonna kill you. Um, we are relish chateau, but sometimes you just like a good pizza, right? Um, so we have a pizza oven made out of uh, a termite mound. We have a jungle gym. Um, so you can do some exercise. You can't really go out running because you will get chased. You will actually run faster. Um, we do have a massage tent um, at Zarafa. Um, we have closed it um, due to COVID and touching. But what we do allow um, is um, guests to have the massage oils and the massage table taken to their tent and then they can massage themselves. We do find, well, we suspect when we open, um, that we will find our afternoon game drives are very quiet, okay? Because the massages tend to take place early afternoon after lunch. Um, so um, there's a danger of that. And this is also, this comic is part of our, um, our COVID document. We've got a very serious COVID document for guests to learn what they can and cannot do whilst in camp. We also have a 40 page really in-depth COVID policy um, and protocols, uh, which is far more boring than this. Um, next to each of our premium camps, our reserve camps, um, we have a two bedroom tented villa. Um, so this next to Zarafa camp, on the other side of that massage tent is the Zarafa Dow Suite, which caters for a family of four in two bedrooms or a family of five. You have a private guide vehicle um, and, and, and dedicated team to the villa. So you enter it through this kind of King Kong kind of door as you come in, it's totally, totally secluded from the main camp. Inside, very much like Zarafa, a nice uh, bath, and that could be you reading the, the book there. Um, right, and, and obviously there's wildlife, you know, that goes without saying. Um, so elephants, lions, wild dogs. Now we're going over from Cylinder Airstrip, which is here, a 30 minute flight, light aircraft flight, to the Duba Plains concession, which is in right in the heart of the northern Okavango Delta. This is where we have permanent waters. It is a very unique landscape, even within the Okavango Delta. Um, so I'll come to that. Um, when you arrive at the airstrip at Duba Plains, you will be sterilized, okay? So we're very, very safe. Um, this is probably, they probably heard that they came from Zarafa. This guy didn't go on the afternoon drives. Um, so therefore, there's one thing that we can do, we'll sterilize him and then uh, he will take place uh, on the afternoon drives. So here um, is a, a two bedroom, sorry, this is not two bedroom, what am I talking about? Um, here's the main public area. Um, so you have a library, you have a wine cellar, we have a interactive chef's kitchen, a couple of iMac computers to do photo editing and videos on, because at both of these camps, we provide Canon professional cameras in each room for guests to use, as well as Swarovski binoculars or Leica binoculars. We don't have Wi-Fi in main public areas of all of our camps, deliberately. We have individual routers for each guest tent so that when they come to this main public area, they can have a conversation, they can look at the, the wildlife, interact with the uh, the guides with a two meter ruling. Um, so this is a shop pre-COVID, you might have to distance them a little bit, um, but it's an interactive chef's kitchen. So every sort of third night, we will have a six course tasting menu paired with fantastic South African wines or even um, other New World wines and French wines and champagnes. Um, and just some of our, our drink set up. So not only that, we have premium spirits and all the drinks are included in the race. So one of the five tents at Stuba Plains. Um, so you have an outside pool uh, or bath. Um, inside, in you know, those huge spacious bedroom leading through to your bathroom, there's your inside bath, uh, outside bath again. Um, we have uh, exercise bikes on each 
deck, not only here, but at Zarafa and Palo Jena camp, so that you can take that exercise bike to the edge of the deck and have your Thelma and Louise moment, saying, shall we? Yes, yes, let's do it. And, and, get, and sort of cycle off the edge into the Okavango Delta there. Or you could go up in a helicopter and also have that Thelma and Louise moment at the end. So, shall I? Yes, shall I? No. Um, in there, this is the Okavango Delta, the Duba Plains concession from the air. So you've got a myriad of channels. Within those channels, we have boating, as well as our day and night wildlife drives. These boats are, um, well, one of the boats is a, a photography boat. So we've got special swivel chairs, photographic gimbals to put the Canon cameras that we provide on there. So you can get nice, steady, low shots of the wildlife that you come to see. Um, beautiful landscapes, um, wide open, so it makes game viewing very, very easy uh, to see. Lots of red lechre antelope here. Red lechre have replaced impala as the dominant antelope species in this area. And the lions, this is one of the major reasons why Duba is such a wildlife hotspot, is that the lions here hunt during daylight hours rather than nighttime, which is normal for most lions. They have learned to adapt to this watery environment. And as they go through that water, they cool their body temperature and that allows them to hunt during daylight hours. We heard pangolins earlier in Namibia, um, thought to be the cause, uh, cause of the, uh, the coronavirus being trafficked to, to Asia. Um, you're not going to catch corona here. You're more likely to get eaten by a lion, which is also very unlikely. Um, the Duba Plains Suite, next to Duba Plains Camp, a two bedroom tented villa like the Zarafa Dow Suite. Um, you've got a central lounge area. We have two sets of Canon cameras and two sets of binoculars, one for each room. And we have a plunge pool or outside bath for each room too, because we can. Um, and also it social distances one bedroom pool from the other. Um, so this is kind of like the journey that we did or we should have done. Um, so gone from Victoria Falls to Botswana to Mound and then fly on to to Namibia to extend that route to Bonheur that Emmy showed to start with, you can easily combine with Namibia. We certainly could before COVID, it depends on what the flights resume, um, you know, the flight networks resume, but also this diagram shows you how well interconnected all of these properties are with other Relais Chateau properties throughout Africa. Um, so that's my details, that's the end. Um, if you want to get my, well, Emmy's going to share my details, but you can take a photograph of that QR code and you can get it straight into your phone. Well, me straight into your phone with a picture. Uh, any questions? Alex, you have brightened all of our days over here because oh. that was a fantastic presentation. I have tears rolling down my face because I was laughing so hard and my kids are like, what is she doing in there? <laughs> um, okay, so we have a couple people who agree. That was fantastic, thank you. And as Alex mentioned, Great Plains has five Relaying Chateaus. So today we're just having a peek at those two. Um, Esther says that you get the best presentation award. Other people say you've gotten the best presentation since June, since this whole pandemic webinaring has begun. Um, well, that's very nice to hear because we've got Jill next next week doing next Kenya. Week. Yeah, and, <laughs> yes. and no pressure, Jill. Or yes, one of the Jill. Jills. Yes, one of those 16 Jills that we have on our screen will be presenting next week. We'll, do be, we'll be doing Mara Plains and Aldonio. And we also have Hilton also joining today as well. So if you want to pop in and say hello. Um, Alex, do you have any word on when Botswana might open for North Americans? Any inkling at all? Uh, do you have a crystal ball? Soon. I'm yeah, sure you've not, got one. It's not open yet. Um, the, the, the borders haven't opened. Um, we suspect it will follow South Africa very quick, closely. And there's a lot of movement with South Africa planning to open up and talk about that opening up. So we hope very, very soon. We already have put together a whole range of private flying options. So you go to our website, there's a private flying options and private jets um, from anywhere in North America, Dubai, Europe, Australia, um, to, you know, sort of 10 to 12 seater aircraft. It can be different sizes depending on the group size. So so long as people are prepared to take the risk of quarantine when they come back, 
into the US or wherever you're, you're coming from, then technically it's possible. We've already had guests coming in. Uh, well, we've had domestic tourism going on in Botswana um, with, with private flying going on. Um, we think as soon as these borders open, the, um, we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll be ready for them. I love it. And just to um, review real quick, your properties, uh, Zarafa and Duba, have five or six rooms total? Oh, sorry. Um, so, so um, I didn't say that. Zarafa had four tents plus four. a two bedroom suite. Okay. And then Duba Plains has five tents and a two bedroom suite. Five and the two bedroom. Perfect. Thank um, you. Let me just, may I take your. Uh, just for one second, just yes, to sure. point out that Namibia has opened uh, Namibia. since uh, last week. Uh, the, we already had international flights from uh, uh, Ethiopian Airlines and uh, we are now expecting Lufthansa as well as um, uh, Qatar Airways and uh, Air Namibia which flies to Frankfurt. So Namibia is open okay. at the moment. Great. And uh, the only uh, uh, stipulation that has to do with quarantine is that uh, which we think is a very practical, considering the whole situation, a uh, practical measure is that the guests we have to stay in the first property for five days. Okay. So that they can be monitored and continue afterwards to, um, you know, continue with their safari tour. But okay. Namibia is officially open from last uh, Friday, we received Friday the 11th of September, we received the first international flight. Great, and I see Hilton said that South African president will be announcing borders reopening tonight. Exactly. And then mm -hmm. Botswana will hopefully follow shortly after that. Right, right. Through. Like Alex said, I think we are all, we were the first to open, but I think we right. are all depending on South Africa as well. Yeah. Okay, so right, because that's kind of the gateway. Thank and then, you. great, thank you so much. Um, Hilton Walker in the chat room answering a lot of questions. If you have any, you can, oh, and Tina, Tina, you're next. We're going to end our Rouge du Bonaire at Royal Chindu. And she's saying that Zambia has been open since July. Tina, are you there? I'm going to share the screen, Tina's screen, because I've, <laughs> I've got a presentation on my side. Worked, I've worked it out. Okay. Have you? I may have worked it out. Stand okay. by. Sorry, my, it jumps around because I've got the weakest signal in the world being in Zambia. You, <laughs> I'm I sure hang on. I don't know what. We can okay, hear Alex, you. Okay, Alex, it's... Uh, Tina, Alex, I can share my side if you want. It's going to have to be you, my love. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you want me to share mine, Tina? Yes, yes please. Yes, please. I've got yeah. to get in. Okay. Right, me, Thanks, love. Let me channel my... Teamwork. My royal chindu. Channel your chindu. My... So... So... I'm not, I never do a normal presentation because I think you can always get your, you can always get the room sizes. I have no idea what my rates are. I, my business is laying tables. So I'm not nearly as funny as Alex, but the only thing I can assure you is some color. So, oh. Hang on, where have you gone? I don't know. Sorry, I, I, swiped, <laughs> I, swiped, I swiped the wrong direction, I think. <laughs> it's, like, it's like Tinder for presentations. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so grateful you're helping me, my love. And if I no, die, I where I am. If I die, Hang on, I think if I die in the right. middle of this presentation, I'll, I'll leave it to you. Okay, so Royal Chindu is all about, it's our home. This is where I live. This is, um, my children have been raised here. I try, I, every couple of years, I try to go off piste and to go to a different city, but we always come back here. So here we are sitting on the banks of the river. Zambia is open. We don't have any quarantine. You can get tourist visas online and um, upon arrival. Uh, so yeah, but that's all. I'm not going to dull up, dull up the end of the day. Can I switch? Royal Chindu is all about our people. We are a family. Everybody, we are built within our community, within our villages. We are the furthest lodge from the Victoria Falls, can, if we can switch to the next clicky clicks. 
Next Can one. you smile? Yes, please. We are okay. So just you can just keep scrolling and I'll keep talking. It's we ten years old this year. My father built everything. I took over from him eight years ago and I took full ownership last year. We are the only lodge that enjoys 15 kilometers of private Zambezi River. We have no lodges, commercial lodges in our area, which is why we are the furthest away from the falls. We are the closest from Botswana. So with regards to that route de bonheur, it works perfectly well with every with getting on to, into the Botswana, Botswana safari and so on and so forth. So keep going. We arrive at either Livingston Airport, you arrive at either Victoria Falls Airport, and then we helicopter most of our guests to the lodge. I always call it the Airwolf moment, and that usually gives my age away because not many everyone knows about Airwolf. But we I are, do. um, you don't oh, know, you would. <laughs> Space Odyssey <laughs> and Airwolf. And thank goodness there's some of us. Um, and we transfer our guests by helicopter doing a flight over the Victoria Falls and onward up to Royal Chundu. Um, if you can go to the next slide, my love. There we go. Keep going. Next slide, just next slide. And we're the, we were the first and only um, Relayan Chateau pro property in Zambia. We are not the first, and uh, we were the first in Big Falls, but we're not the only. We've got our beautiful sister across the river, and, well, da upstream, downstream across the river, Nepal Jenna, which Alex, you didn't, you're not talking about Nepal Jenna today, love. I didn't want to steal your thunder. Oh, but it's no thunder. We, it's, we, we, we are complimentary. So Tropic where, where the great, I love Tropic Thunder. Go full retard, <laughs> baby. <laughs> we were talking to an American Airport. audience, always be careful. <laughs> but this just gives you the scenery of beautiful, big, open, wide spaces. And we want to reiterate that with Africa. Africa's, for all of the properties that you're hearing today, we are not in congested, uh, tourist-ridden spaces. We are in wide, open we, if ever there was a continent that was perfectly suited for post-COVID travel, it has to be Africa in terms of our lodges and our, our remote places and spaces. But okay, on back to Royal Chundu. There we are. Next slide. You can keep, keep going. Uh, keep going. Um, that's just, this is boring stuff. You can, River Lodge. I have two lodges. I have a River Lodge on the mainland of Zambia. We um, overlook the ga a game reserve on the opposite bank with massive big um, wide vistas over the Zambezi River. Everything at the River Lodge is bright, bold, crazy, bright, bold and beautiful. Crazy clashing Chitenge colours, which is the fabric of Zambia. Um, we, we, I inherited a property that was brown, bo boring, beige and banal from my father. And I turned it into what I thought was a very good sense of place, honouring the red soil, the blue sky, the well, the pink sky, the red, the 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 red sun, the blue river, and I've brought it all into our spaces to give our guests that sense of place. Next slide, please, my love. He's, my father does say I've turned it into a Mogadishu nightclub, which I think must be fabulous to go there. Next slide. Next slide. We don't have animals. We just paint them on the walls instead. <laughs> Next slide. Next slide. And then four kilometers upstream, I own a private island in the middle of the Zambia. You can go back a bit. We own a private, go back to one slide back. We own a private island in the middle of the Zambezi River. Can you go one slide? There, that's it. We have this private island in the middle of the Zambezi River, which has only four suites and is perfect for your honeymooners, romantic couples, couples of a very intimate um, and romantic nature big bars outside, it operates completely privately and independently. We get a lot of exclusive use out of our North American market, um, where uh, guests will take the whole island as for a family holiday, um, which, which is what's keeping us busy in these interesting times until the end of the year, is our little island exclusive use. And then, um, if, and where, where the River Lodge was bright, bold, crazy colours, island, I've kind of tried to turn it all down, we're bringing in the blues, we're because the river's the hero, of course, for us. River's one of the heroes. The most important hero is our community and of a Royal Chindu family, which I'm going to get on to next. So if you can just swipe a bit. My loves. Next slide. We've got a tree house. And then this is what I want. This is the most important bit about Royal Chindu. 
everything that we do, so you will have gone on safari and had these beautiful experiences of close encounters of the animal kind. You will have had wide, crazy vistas of or views of and and sensational Namibian uh, landscapes, um, and and Botswana water and uh, the gorgeous Dow Suites, and I can ably attest to the magnificence of Zarafa in the Great Plains uh, presentation you saw earlier. And then you come to you come to Royal Chindu, and um, Royal Chindu is about community, where we have we are with, built within our local villages and everything that we do and spend money on. If we've got to have a service, we look within to see who would have that as their business. We do business training and business plans. And as a result, as of 20, end of 2019, as our audited financials, 2019, 74% of all of our income that we, enjoy, that we received went back to our local communities through services, supplies, school, and our staff. My management team, led by Aggie and Hesse, who in this photo right up front, are stakeholders. So they are actively empowered and are, dis uh, are financial decision makers in everything that we do. And that's kind of, we're putting the people back in, pe people, it's, we put your, the people element into your African um, experience uh, in terms of ownership and in terms of empower, imp true stakeholding empowerment. If you move to the next slide. If you are all familiar with, um, here at a, whether it's our school, whether it's, be so for instance, like Best. Best is our head of security, but he has a courier company. It's not really a courier company. He, deli he, deliver he delivers all the firewood for, um, for our kitchens and our bomers, but he gets, it's his transport service that he, we, he then earns um, income from as a business. We have our village mothers. We have... Um, rubbish removals. We have uh, our managers have transfer vehicles that travel that tra keep the guests moving back and forward, should they wish to go to the Vic Falls for activities. And so everybody has the opportunity to have a business that spins of Royal Chindu, and Royal Chindu has then become the marketplace for our communities to have that 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 optional opportunity. You can move to the next next slide. If any of you are familiar with Fogo Island, I, this is their idea. And I was so moved by it three years ago that I wanted to keep myself in check and see where we were. So I borrowed their economic nutritional label and just kind of breaks it all down as to where it all goes. If we can move to the next slide. 99% of our staff come from our local community. Next slide, my love. 99% of our staff come from our local community. I'm the token 1% because I'm not from the community. My father was born in Zambia, but I'm, I, I won't put myself into kind of that disadvantaged. I was supremely advantaged, and this is my way of writing, writing that um, nepotism, for want of a better description. 76% of our management team are all female, which is unusual in Africa, and super unusual in rural Africa. This is my dream team. Um, Hissa, Aggie, and Clever. You've got to have an accountant called Clever. Um, and this was all of us, at, well, this is the team at the Relay and Chateau Congress last year in London. So if you could move to the next slide. So all of our food is, well, all of our fresh produce comes from our local communities as well. So we supply seeds for any fruit, herb, uh, fruit, flower, herb, whatever can grow. And then we buy it back at market pricing. We have a, um, we, if you, next slide, all of our food is Zambian. We giving, again, to reiterate that sense of place. We give our guests the chance to have the tastes of our land, not to try and emulate what they can have at home in, in, in their own cities around the world. Fresh fish comes from our local fishermen. We have a fishing, um, a fishing net, trying to get rid of fishing net or mosquito nets in the Zambezi River. So we, um, we pay for anybody who wants to uh, use a legal fishing net. We license the fishermen. We know then who's catching on, on legal nets and we then buy the fish back at market pricing. If our fishermen want to catch on rod and reel, we will sponsor all their equipment and then we pay double market pricing for those fish as well. So that is us. Seeds, as I've mentioned, that's Edith going through and she's never quite sure of heirloom seeds. So hence her confusion on her face, but um, she gives, she's got the most incredible gardens that have kept all of us fed throughout COVID. She's made the most money, uh, what was it? Um, Amazon and Edith have made the most money during um, COVID. All of, Zambian tasting menus, Zambian food, next slide. The wines and the drinks all go on. You know what happens at Relay Properties. I'm not going to go on about that. Activities, I shan't bore you either, but canoeing trips, boat cruises, 
bird watching, private island walks, our local village, um, spa treatments in room, uh, and our, lo our homeschool for children. But uh, if you can go to the next slide for that. Victoria Falls, I keep forgetting to mention Victoria Falls. This is just a little brief shot of all the kind of the activities. Charlotte French, you will be here next month, so you will be enjoying them all. And then our baobab forest on our little island, we have over 23 mature baobabs and about 40 little saplings all coming through. So we've got this magnificent baobab forest where we do dinners underneath. We have a Tatenga seamstresses who were always on, um, always on site stitching up the dress that I'm wearing today, Tamlin's dress in this picture, for instance. Um, but now, because we've got no guests, we've turned all of that into a little online business, which I'll explain to you now. now. If you can just jump next slide. Yes. Victoria Falls, you know what happens there. And if you're following Brooke Berlin, you'll know she's just had a big smooch in a beautiful costume. I'm very jealous of her. I'm very jealous of that costume. She's just been doing that on the edge of the Victoria Falls yes, Monday. And we are not a safari, we are not a safari experience. We are a, a Zambezi river and community experience. So we are putting the people into your, into your, your, the stop um, on your route to Bonheur. Um, we are a river experience where yes, yes, you might have hippo and crocodiles and elephants coming down to drink, but if you, for safari, you've got the magnificent Great Plains and the fabulous Epaka as well, that, which you've already heard from today. We're about the people. Next one, birds. I'm not, we've got birds that are endemic. I'm a complete bird nerd, but I, apparently I lose my audience when I go, start going on about that. So this year, what we did is we obviously, like everybody else, all ground to a, a fabulous halt. I got stuck in the USA, but what we have done is we have our security guard, Eric, whose um, uh, stage name is EC Bling, we decided we'd just kind of go completely homegrown. So Eric uh, sings as a budding music or budding singer. He wrote the song and I'll be sending you all the presentations so you can hear it all. If not, follow us on Facebook or Instagram. EC Bling did a fabulous um, uh, uh, music video um, just to kind of lift everyone up and remind you all that Africa always tugs at the heartstrings. Next slide. Uh, you better jump quickly before it starts. <laughs> <laughs> and then what else we did? I got stuck in Texas. Aggie was here in Zambia. Tamlin, who does all of our social media, was in Cape Town. Um, and we decided to take, um, to kind of a, do a Royal Chindu homeschool, which we've continued with. And we're on lesson number about 60 at the moment. And it's so much fun. Lots of little things for everyone to do. Um, lots of things to keep my mind off the fact that no two operators at that time were paying us. <laughs> Painting rocks was a great, great meditation. And um, all of those lessons have, you can still find online. So while I was delivering little stones um, to people in Texas and on their verandas, Aggie was delivering little painted stones to our village mamas. And so we were trying to keep ourselves, even though we were disparate and, and distance from each other, as kind of connected as possible. And if you go to the next slide, we'll go through some of the, just some highlights. Keep going, keep going, um, keep going. Am I, am I glitching? Keep going. This is still all homeschool. Homeschool, you can keep, you can, you can flick through fast. Homeschool, head wraps, laying tables is my thing. Uh, more, more songs, more head wraps, more chitenge. There's always chitenge with us. Um, and this, ye this yellow peacock was our theme. And then what we decided to do, while all of our communities weren't making money because there were no guests to have the services that supported all of our communities, we, um, we, we obviously all of our staff have stayed on board we, to go through all of that. Um, but we've, we've got seven seamstresses now, two carvers, um, we started this little online shop three, three months ago and we've sold out five times over. I can't keep up with, and please ignore the photos because it's me and my iPhone standing on a table. It's very homespun. But we decided to start to, um, just instead of the depressing, the thousands of protocols that we all had to write and the thousands of um, emails that we had to assure, assure everyone that we were all um, going to be as safe and sound as possible, we decided to spread some cheer Chitenge chair. And we have been so unbelievably well supported across the world by all, and we haven't opened it to anyone other than the people who love us already. 
Um, but we have be, had received the most incredible support that has kept our village um, pumps going with fuel for the gardens. It's kept um, our seamstresses. We bought uh, brand new mach uh, sewing machines for our seamstresses. We bought pumps for our carvers. One of our carvers is a paraplegic, so he carves in a frame that we've been able to uh, procure because of the profits. And it's a, the online shop is 100% back to community. Obviously, DHL takes a big chunk of change, um, but the rest, not one of us earns a cent from it. Aggie and I, spend more hours on this than we've ever spent on anything in our lives and it's given us as much cheer as we've been able to spread around the world so should you wish you go go on here it's christmas is the time of giving so by friday you'll have your christmas list and that's us as simply put we, it's all about empowering our local community our makers if you're not on our if you're not a staff member you can still make through our little online shop which um has given us all great joy and we hope you enjoy it so that's it. A little bit of color to your lives. Brilliant. Brilliant. I've that's got my little bit of color. Sorry. As well. Thank you. Thank you, my Alex. Thank you, my my Emmy, for wearing your flying your Tenge flag. And thank you for everyone's patience with my technological disadvantage. Dis, um, disadvancement. No, not at all. I mean, we can feel your energy through the screen because I I'm sure everyone can because I can. Um, and we have a couple, just a couple of questions here. Do most people start or end their trip at Royal Chundu? And how many nights on average do they visit with you before they move on? So our average stay is, um, is three to four nights. Um, it has lent in the last half of last year, it was four nights. At the moment, the average stay is zero. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> but the, uh, no, the, as of the, it's, um, it's moved very much over 10 years from a two and a half night stay to a four night stay. The latter, the four night stay ha really kind of happened at the end of 2019. So three to four nights was average. Okay. Um, you, there was another question you asked me. Um, uh, what did I say? He said, start or ending. Do they yeah. start or end with us? It depends. It depends on the guest. Um, I, so certain operators will book us at the start because they like their guests to kind of chill, relax and kind of immerse themselves into a full feel of Africa for some. For others, they end with us because it's kind of the last piece of the African puzzle when people have done an, perhaps an urban um, experience. I know we're not talking about um, other properties, but if you've been in Cape Town and stayed at Element House or what have you been at Apple Place? Week. We've been, yeah. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> okay, so you know it. So if you've been to Apple Place in Johannesburg, you would have a, a, a huge urban experience. And then you're on safari in Botswana or South Africa. And for, for guests, you've got one of those jam-packed um, jam-packed itineraries at the end is also at the end is also a fabulous way because it's your time that my my partner was a tour operator for many years in the states and he likes to describe it as you go you go on this trip and you take out all your clothes every stop you take out more clothes and you know it gets a bit harder and harder to get everything back into the suitcase <laughs> so when you come to royal tundu this is his analogy when you come to Royal Chindu, it gives you the chance to sit and fold all your experiences back properly, let it all settle before you get onto your flight and go home, so that your, your full experience is immersed into your muscle memory and that that bag of um, happy African exploration can be zipped tightly and you don't lose what you've just enjoyed. Does that make sense? It makes 100% sense and it kind of just, and, and today we did end um, here along the Zambezi River with you, Tina, and it has been an incredible trip. I mean, next week we're going to go and visit um, Kenya and um, oh. Mauritius and Madagascar, but um, this, this route that we've done today, you guys, I'm sure that you guys kind of felt all of it through the screen too. There's passion, there's love, there's humor, there's wildlife, and there's the community. Um, so I think, as you yeah. said, it's, it kind of, like the whole experience, uh, you know, it truly carries the spirit of Relay and Chateau, where you get to experience the place and the people and connect with these places. So yeah. thank you guys so much for joining us and today. I do, I do. 
I just want to mention, as you're going off to Kenya, all of you next week, is that uh, next week I'm actually going to Kenya, not virtually, um, because Kenya Airways has started flying directly again from Livingston to Nairobi. So I'll be there. I'll be meeting Charlotte hopefully en route. Um, but we just to just to let everyone know, you can come in on that. Um, uh, uh, I'm sure that you next week you'll hear about all the beautiful safari pioneers, but there's the um, three great plains. But you got your JFK to Nairobi, and then as of next week, Nairobi to Livingston, which we'll be doing as well. And Emirates has started flying back into Lusaka. So the week after that, I'm flying back to Texas, but you can fly via Emirates on that route. Emirates, Rwanda, and Ethiopia are all flying into Lusaka. So, so you're on the move. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> As, well, as gonna, we know, we're not going to... I'm going to release everyone. Right. I'm going to release everyone. Okay. So that kind of ends the, the webinar.